All rise. We will have Please be seated. We will just swap. We're in open session, Your Honours. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Fall, can you now uh, indicate you? We spoke vaguely about it. If you are going to be done today, including the Hillsong defence and any re-examination, uh, uh, that's that's my objective, Mr. President, and I'll do my utmost to make it happen. But like I said, uh, I cannot guarantee that it will happen. But I'll do my utmost. Because if that's not the case, then we will have to uh, stop at four today if we are continuing on Monday. That's if not, if we're going to finish today, I say it again, we can sit until six. I, I thought the cutoff period was five o'clock, but... Uh, no, no, no. If you're going... To, that's working over time, pushing it. We have already pushed a lot today in overtime. Because the reason why I say that, Mr. President, is because between now and four, it would be difficult for me to ascertain whether I can finish. But if we can push till five o'clock, uh, then there is a big likelihood that I, I may be able to do it. But at four, really, it would be difficult. Because I can't predict uh, how the witness would. And uh, I have videos and, and uh, issues to deal with as well. Mr. Farr, what I'm saying is this. We, we, we started today um, earlier than scheduled. We've taken shorter breaks than scheduled. Uh, all of that in hopes of pushing until 6 p.m. and having it done with. But if we are not going to finish today, then we will have to stop at 4 and continue on Monday. That is... I am much guided, Mr. President. I'm guided by your honest decision. I would do my utmost to finish by 5 o'clock. So by 4, uh, I should be able to indicate to you whether, uh, uh, depending on how much I have covered, whether that is uh, an optimistic uh, uh, assessment or not. All right, okay. Thank you, Thank you Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, uh, before I resume my questioning, I would uh, ask that uh, the following document be admitted into evidence. It's uh, the document in uh, tab 59 of the Ruto Defense Bundle. Uh, it's uh, a public document uh, showing the political parties in Kenya and information about them. The point we used it for was to show when the PNU was founded, and it is uh, KEN D09 0041 0430. It's uh, talking about the main parties in Kenya. Ms. Zago? We haven't really had the opportunity to look at the document or examine it. I don't, at this stage, we don't have a particular objection. I do note that the document was not shown to the witness. There's no indication of the reasons why this document should be introduced through the evidence of this witness unless my learned friend can assist us. Are you objecting or not? I don't understand. I, I do object to the um, tendering of this document through this witness. Mr. Mr. President, uh, this, is, this is a public document. Uh, it's, it's not produced for the purposes of litigation. Uh, it states an obvious fact about when a particular organization or various organizations in Kenya uh, came into being. Uh, there is no reason why uh, this 
documents should not be admitted in evidence. This is, this is something that is publicly known. It's, uh, I leave it at that, Mr. President. For the record, we have no objection to it being produced as an exhibit, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Farmer will mark it for identification. As your honest please. Thank you, Mr. President. Document Ken D09-0041-0430, will be registered as follows. MFI T D09-0072. It is a public document. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Witness, welcome back. Um, Mr. Uhuru Kenyatta, he's the president of Kenya and he's a Kikuyu, is that right? Kwanza ningeomba bwana order ona ni iseme jambo moja tu kwanza. Answer. I would like to say something, counsel. I have something to say. Uh, witness, is that an answer to this question? Answer, no, it is not an answer to the question. I wanted to say that I have taken a lot of medication this morning. And the medication is uh, giving me a number of side effects. So, I'm not feeling very well. I would like us to stop at 4 p.m. because I really do not feel well. private session. We're in public session, Your Honours. Thank you. Mr. Farah, continue. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Witness, the question, the question I asked before we went into private session was as follows. President Uhuru Kenyatta, He's a Kikuyu, isn't he? Ndiyo ni Kikuyu. Answer, yes, he is Kikuyu. Would you agree with me that he will not organize or support an organization whose aim is to remove the Kikuyu from Kenya? Answer, he would not be in a position to. I, I want to understand what you mean. Uh, my proposition to you was Uhuru Kenyatta will not participate or in an organization or support an organization which is planning to remove Kikuyus from Kenya. What do you say to that? Do you agree? Nakubaliana na hayo. Answer, I do agree. 
Uh, now, uh, Mr. Witness, I want to read out something that you told the prosecution in your interview. Mr. President, I'm referring to uh, tab one of the OTP bundle, uh, paragraph 50. And uh, this is what you told the prosecution. The year 2005 was the year of the new constitution. In February 2005, the new constitution campaign started. There was a political campaign against the Kikuyu. The main statement was that the Kikuyu must go. At that, at that time, Ruto came to location four for this campaign. Technically, there was no party but two movements. The Orange Movement, led, led by Ruto and Raila, and the Banana Movement, led by Uhuru and Kibaki. The Orange Movement was against the new constitution, and the Banana Movement was in favor of the new constitution. The Orange Movement wanted to evict the Kikuyu from the Rift Valley. The proposed constitution intended that everybody was entitled to stay where they were. But the Orange Movement was against that because the constitution implied that the Kikuyu would remain in the Rift Valley, which was what they did not want at all. This is what you said to the prosecution. It is false, isn't it? Hayo nilio muambia prosecution. Yote ni yale Answer. With reference to what I said to the prosecutor, these were words that were attributed to me by number 19 on the list. And these words are false. Do you agree? Hayo yalikuwa mambo ya kutengenezewa. Answer. These were words or a statement that was prepared by somebody else. Uh, I, the question is not who prepared the statement. The question is that the statement is false. Do you agree? Hapana. Answer, no, I do not agree. Uh, Mr. Witness, what I'm trying to s say to you is that what is contained in this statement, this statement you said was prepared by 19. I am putting it to you that the statement is false. Ndiyo ni uongo. Answer. Yes. These words are a lie. Uh, Mr. Witness, I would like to play a video uh, for you to take a look at, and uh, then I would ask you some questions. Uh, could you kindly play, Shalini, uh, this video? It's KEN-D09 does zero zero four one does zero zero seven eight zero uh, this was a rally in Kisumu and mr. president the transcript is contained in tab seven of the uh, Ruto defense bundle and the ERN number is KEN does D09 does zero zero four one does zero seven eight one 
Please play the video. triumphant entry into the boys stadium too soon. The venue that won the historical 2001 Kanu LDP murder. With a long convoy of vehicles, the over 50 Kanu and LDP legislators were here to complete the first phase of their month-long referendum campaigns and persuaded the masses against the proposed draft constitution which they said was not articulate. <laughs> Mr. Witness, uh, perhaps uh, we should uh, move it back a little bit. Uh, Salini, could you kindly move it back a little bit? Okay, stop it there. Ms. Mr. Witness, do you recognize this person? Answer, yes, I do recognize him. And who is he? Uhuru Kenyatta. Answer, it is Uhuru Kenyatta. And you agree with me that he is wearing a yellow shirt with the word no written at the back? Ndiyo mefa orange. Answer, yes, I can see that he's wearing something orange. With the word no written at the back of his shirt. Ndivyo. Uh, could you kindly continue playing the video? Answer, yes. And Mr. Witness, could you, did you hear what he was saying? Ndiyo. Could you tell the court? Answer, yes. Overlapping of microphones. He was refusing the WACO constitution that had been proposed. So are you saying that uh, Mr. Kenyatta was supporting the no camp? Kwa wakati huo, akisema no. Answer. At that moment in time when he said no, he was on the other side. Could you tell us which side he was? The Opande wa orange. Answer. He was on the orange side. And uh, what was orange advocating for? Were they for the constitution or against? Answer. They were saying no to the Constitution. You kindly continue playing the video, please. Uh, there is no audio, it seems. Does the other part of the video make a different point from the one you've just made? Well, not so much. Uh, there, there is a speech that I wanted your honours to hear. It 
was here that a lobby group was formed with the name of strengthening the newly found Kanu and LDP relationship. Today we are launching the Orange Democratic And throughout the function, new and Mr. Witness, who was the last person we saw speaking? Libwana William Ruto. Answer, that was Mr. William Ruto. Uh, Mr. President, I'm looking at the transcript, uh, in particular uh, lines 56 uh, to 63. And Mr. Witness, could you tell the court what you heard Mr. Ruto say? Kitu alitamuka alisema kwamba anataka amani na watu waishi kwa. Answer, he said as follows, he said that he wanted peace, he said he wanted people to live in peace. And, and Mr. Witness, is it correct, is it not that he said, all of us as Kenyans, we do not want tribalism? Is that, would, be, would that be what he said? Ndiyo, ya kamalisi ya kisema, tuishi. Answer, yes. And then, to finish, he said, let us live in peace. So, uh, Mr. Witness, uh, you agree that on this day of this rally, ODM was launched with, with Uhuru Kenyatta as one of the members. Do you agree? Answer, yes, I am in agreement with you. Mr. President, uh, may I ask that the video be admitted into evidence? Uh, the reference is KEN D09 0041 0780. Zago? No objections, Ms. Uh, Mr. President. Mr. Cantwell? We have no objection. Uh, video is admitted as the next in the Ruto defense exhibits. Thank you, Mr. President. The video can D09 0080 will be registered as EVD T D09 and will be referred to as Ruto defense exhibit number 273. The video is a public video. Mr. President, may I also ask that the transcript, uh, the translation of the video uh, contained in tab 7, uh, KEN-D09-0041-0781, be admitted into evidence. Ms. Sago. No objections with the usual caveat with respect to the accuracy of the uh, translation. Thank you. We do not object, Mr. President. Admitted as the next through to defense exhibit. Thank you, Mr. President. And the transcript can D09-0041-0781 will be registered as EVD-T-D09-0274 and will also be referred to as Ruto Defense Exhibit Number 274. Thank you, Madam Court Officer. Uh, Mr. Witness, before I leave this topic, I would like to, I'd like you to see another video. It's uh, KEN-D09-0041-0249. And Mr. President, your honesty, the transcript is contained in uh, uh, 
a minute, Mr. President, I'll consult. It should be in tab 14 of the bundle, Mr. President. The no campaigners held their first meeting of the day in Kericho town during which they declared that their march towards an overwhelming victory in the November 21st vote was unstoppable. They revisited their claims that the proposed constitution had been engineered by a clique of power hungry individuals around the president. <laughs> From Kericho, the group moved to Nandi South District. Here, yet again, they exuded confidence that Kenyans would reject the proposed constitution. Western province ni chungwa na nini nataka ni muambi mukicheza ila kikombe ya chungwa sisi ni watu tajukua. Leader of the official opposition, Huru Kenyatta, wondered why some leaders in the government had drastically changed their position on the constitution after being in power for only two years. Uh, Mr. Witness, uh, you agree that uh, the person we last saw on that video is also Uhuru Kenyatta, right? The timestamp is 0101. In this video? Yes, it's 0101 in the timestamp. That's what I have in my transcript. I want to believe that is correct. No, the question was what was seen on the video. Yes. That uh, the person we have last seen on the video, who, that person is Uhuru Kenyatta. Mr. Witness, do you agree? Ndiyo nakubali. Yes, I agree. Do you agree that uh, in this video he was campaigning for the no camp? Ndiyo alipika kampeni kwa pande wa la. Yes. He was campaigning for the no camp. Uh, and Mr. Witness, you would agree with me that the first place showed on the video is location four. Ndiyo. Yes. And Mr. Witness, you agree with me that in this video you did not see person 13. Please refer to the PIS for, for person 13. Ndivyo haonekani. No, you cannot see that individual. And, uh, may I ask that this video be admitted into evidence? Um, the reference number is uh, KEN-D09-0041-0249. Ms. Zago? We would like to have the timestamps because the witness is being asked uh, whether a person appears in this video in its totality. But as far as I understand, we haven't watched the video in, in its completeness. So maybe we can have the timestamps, and we do not object to the timestamps selected by the council uh, to go in. But is in its entirety, yes, we do object. Mr. President, uh, we are trying to save time here. And uh, the provenance of this video cannot be doubted. It's, it's a news report that was aired on Kenyan TV. And uh, 
it's a rally that took place at several locations. If, if the prosecution's only objection is that they have not seen the entire video, we can play it. But the fact of the matter is it would waste time and... No, that individual does not feature there. Uh, Mr. President, uh, before I move to play that video, may I ask that this news article be admitted into evidence? It is KEN-D09-0041-0221. It addresses the rally that the witness talked about in his statement to the prosecution. Ms. Zago. I believe the witness I'm reluctant to make well, specific move. submissions let's on public. Let's, let's go into private section. We are in open session, Your Honours. Uh, Mr. President, sorry, Mr. Witness, uh, in your statement to the prosecution, that is tab one, I am referring specifically to paragraph 95. Uh, you stated that at the meeting of 14 October, there were certain persons present We are no I'm feeling dizzy. Um, yes, hold on, Mr. Witness. Um, yeah, let's go back to private session. All rise. We will be there. Please be seated. We use a swap. We are in open session, Your Honours. Thank you very much, and witness, welcome back. We will um, try and push along. We will continue from now and go, but at six o'clock, we have to be out of here. It will be all over by six o'clock, and that includes both the uh, cross-examination by Mr. Keegan Katwa and the re-examination by the prosecution. We're not extending beyond six. The witness would have to be discharged at that point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm glad. Uh, Mr. Witness, welcome back. Uh, in your statements to the prosecution, you talked about two meetings, and the first meeting was on 14 October 2007. 
at location 11. Please refer to the, to the PIS, location 11, on 11 October, 14 October, I beg your pardon, 2007. Do you remember that, Mr. Witness? I do not remember. I am still feeling dizzy. I don't feel fine, and I don't know what answer to give to your question. Mr. President, I stand guided by your decision. May I proceed, Mr. President? It's about you're trying to refresh his memory about meeting. You put that question again. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Witness, you in your statements you talked about uh, two meetings that occurred in location three, and uh, in paragraph 95 of your statement, you said. There was a meeting that took place on 14th of October at location, location 11. Could you take a look at the PIS for location 11? <coughs> Have you seen it, Mr. Witness? Yes, I have seen it. And uh, you told the prosecution uh, that uh, persons three, person eight, person seven, person fourteen, and person two were present. That's what you told the prosecution. And person 18. That's what you told the prosecution. I would like to refer to the chamber. I cannot answer your question. I made a major effort to come here. I am feeling dizzy. All right. Um, so you cannot answer because you're feeling dizzy? I have a headache and I am feeling dizzy. Uh, Mr. Farland, the circumstances we have to uh, leave it there and resume on Monday. That's um, what it has to be. I'm guided, Mr. Farland. All right. We'll finish it. Witness, uh, we will then, in light of what you say, we do not have a doctor on hand to examine you, but um, we will now adjourn for today. And the VW will take over, and they will uh, have you see a doctor um, in the meantime. But we will come back and continue on Monday morning at our usual time at 9.30, uh, the Hague time. 
You understand? Ndiyo, nimesikia. Yes. Uh, you remain I have understood. Yes. You will remain bound by the subpoena uh, that is been served on you. So you remain bound by it and you will be back on Monday to continue your testimony. In the meantime, you are not to discuss your evidence or your testimony with anybody. Do you understand? Indivio. Yes. So we will adjourn now and see you on Monday. The court will rise. All rise.